I like snakes. Let me search up Python. Ah! What's the most spoken language in the world got Easter eggs built Bruh. into it and makes searching any data related to the snake impossible? Huh? It's Python! <laughs> But how do you do a python? Do you need a huh? keyboard? Can you type with your toes? How to get the toe crumbs out of the keyboard? Why are my toes so moist? Yeah, I searched up a lot of toe stuff. To answer the first question, you can download python or just run it on the official python website. Okay, python python on the wall. What is two plus three, y'all? Wait, that actually worked? I mean, um... What if you want to store the answers for later use? Variables! <laughs> okay, so you just make a variable and set it equal to something. There's many, many different types of variables or vars as the cool kids say. There's the number, <laughs> words, and trues and falsies. All of these have a different name that the cool kids call it. Numbers can be either normal boy numbers or weird girl numbers. Get it? Because there's a period. They are called integers and floats respectively. The word <laughs> Words or strings are just stuff that's not numbers. You write it inside quotes, double quotes, single quotes, it doesn't really matter. But if I ever catch any of you knuckleheads use a back tick, consider it the last day of your life. Oh yeah, and bulls are just variables that are either true or false. Now it's time for what's that variable? Today's challenge is this guy. Um, it could literally be anything. I have zero context. Would you like to use a hotline? Sure, I don't even know what the price is if I win. You get one print statement. Okay, fine. I don't even know how to use it. I just want to go home. The print statement can be used to see what a variable is. You just put the variable inside the parentheses. Wait, parentheses? That reminds me... OPERATIONS! <laughs> you can add numbers, subtract them, divide, multiply, take the modulus, which is the leftover part after everything is taken out, exponent them, and this weird guy that you will never use, trust me. And you can even add strings together, but what about comparing things like boy numbers to a girl number, or bool to cool bool? Or like apples to oranges? Dude, get real! This isn't a joking matter! I out to report you to the FDIC for that joke. Anyways, these can be done with comparisons. <laughs> Are these two things the same? Are these two things different? Is this greater than or equal to it? Is this less than or equal to it? And you can also check if both of these things are something. Like true and true is true. Because it needs both sides to be true. But if one of them is false, the whole thing would be false. There's also the or keyword. This just needs one of the sides to be true. Right now, it may seem like this is just random stuff and it might not make sense. But let's look at this random but useful thing. Type. This just tells you what type of variable it is. Input. It takes in text from the user. These two convert one thing to another. Len. This just gives you the length of a string. Okay, what if you're running late to your Pilates class and you need to store a list of variables? You don't have time to make a new variable each time. So what can you do? Collections! <laughs> There's the list, which is written in square brackets. These are the most popular because you can add stuff, remove it, put it in itself, sort it, reserve it. I mean, reverse it but you can't lock it this is where tuples come in no this is where tuples come in there you go they are written with round parentheses so it kind of looks like a lock like it locks the values once written and you can't change it do i come in now bro did i say your name um did you no Okay, fine. This is a dictionary. Yes, it's like the book. It's like a list, but freakier because dictionaries have keys and values. You get the value by using the key. Let's make three things. A list, a tuple, and a dictionary filled with a list of fruits. Yes, these are all fruits. Let's name them accordingly and notice how the first letter of each word is capitalized. This is just another way programmers hide the fact that they don't have social skills nor deodorant. Okay, when you want to see something from the list, you put the name and square brackets. Change the output by putting a value here. When you want to add something to the end, you do the name.append. Remove by doing the name.remove. Len for length, and you have to put this one in the front. Don't forget that. Dot insert for putting something in a specific spot. And dot sort to, well, you know. Now, this is really important. 
indexing. You might have seen how putting a 2 gets you the third item. Why is that? Well, programmers can't count. Nor do they have deodorant. Ew, bro. So, the first item isn't index 1. It is index 0. Because what else would it be? Okay, let's come over here to tuples. These cute little things are much simpler. You get stuff from it like you do with lists. Just a square bracket. You got the len from before. Count, index, blah, blah, blah. You won't be using this guy. So let's just move on, okay? Do I come in now? Look who decided to show their freaky face. Okay, to get a thing, you have to reference the key. Oh no, I lost the key. You will be severely punished for you have doomed us all, boy. Oh wait, yeah, you can just do dot keys and dot values to get them. You can change values like you would with a list, get length just like before, and adding to a dictionary is really easy. You know how we already did a dot append thing? Well, you can just throw that in the trash because we're going to be using dot update. But even more important and controversial is the issue of casing. There's a lot of ways to case variable names. You got camel, pascal, kebab, snake, screaming snake, train, and flat. Each of these are used for different reasons, but the best one is to just use a letter and hopefully you remember. Now, all of these might seem simple, but they are the building blocks of Python, or should I say scales of Python, huh? Huh? <sighs> mm, uh, or should I say they are the scales of pi- <laughs> But this next part is the most powerful, so let's get serious! Flows. <laughs> Just variables here and there isn't what makes websites and games and Twitter work. Well, the last one doesn't work anyways. There's flows that say that if this happens, then do that. And that's actually the first flow. If statements. My name is 8. If name equals 8, then unlock the car. Else, launch the missiles. If this is true, it does this part. If it's false, it does this other part. But what if you were testing for multiple things? If name equals 8 and color equals yellow then unlock the car else release the nukes okay but like what if you want different things to happen based on different people if name equals eight then all is good and if name equals sus bob then alert the huh? fcc i'm about to collect a bounty else the united kingdom will be no more the elif is just the combination of else and if and it's just like another if that gets tested when the other ones before it fail and you can literally have an infinite number of elif statements in fact in fact, that's basically what Undertale was written in. The L statement is just in case all the others failed, which means something went really wrong. It goes down the list, and if one of the ifs or elifs is true, the rest of the code is ignored, just like deodorant is to a programmer. This is why there's memes about figuring out if a number is even or odd by using an infinite elif statement. Loops are good for doing something over and over again, infinitely or otherwise. For loops, repeat repeat for a set number of times and while loops repeat while something is true. This is how a for loop is written. The range part literally just means 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So basically do this whole part five times. And this i could literally be any other variable, but it's just the most used one. Now, let's set r to true, which makes it a boolean, and use it in a while loop. While true, print banana. Since r's value doesn't get changed, it will literally print this forever. Just like pi or the universe or your forehead. You can also break out of a loop early by using break. And you can skip a portion of the loop by using continue, which goes to the next time it's gonna loop. Okay, now this next part is important. You know how you can wear the same underwear four times? Normal, inside out, normal flipped, and inside out flipped? Yes. Python has reusable underwear built into the code. They are called functions. <laughs> I want to use this chunk of code over and over again. Well, you can bundle it up in a function. You say that you're defining a function, give it a name, give it something to work with. You can also just leave this part empty. Colon, and on the next line, do what you want to do. We're just going to call them weird. And you call a function with parentheses. You don't even have to print something though. You can literally perform a calculation, take in multiple things, or even just return something back to the request. Now, all these features can be used to build some cool things. But to build a great thing, you need the most important important feature 
It is literally the reason they had to make a C++ after C. It is commonly confused as a woman because of how similar it is to an object, but they are actually called classes. <laughs> classes are basically all the things we learned bundled up. Let's say you have a programmer. Well, this programmer can do a bunch of things. Write code, beg for higher pay, get laid off, or theoretically even use a deodorant. All these can be functions, but to attach a function to an object, you have to do this. First, make an object using the word class. Then, indent it inside, define the functions. Beg for pay, this takes in the amount to be begged for. Getting fired, this takes nothing. It could literally be an executive order nowadays. Use deodorant, this one is still a work in progress, so we're just gonna pass it through. Now, this is just the blueprint. It says what can be. Let's make an object, programmer1. Put these parentheses because I said so. I really don't know why you put them. I just put them every time. I never question it. Now, let's see programmer1 beg for money to put food on his table. You access functions inside classes by putting a dot. No, programmer1, you are an unpaid intern. Feel my managerial wrath. And objects are cool because inside of them you can even store data or data depending on how you look at it. Like our programmer guy can have a name, an age, and body odor. You define this by making an underscore underscore in it underscore underscore function. Yes, this is a British thing, hence why I wanted to drop the nukes earlier. And you pass in self, again I don't know what this does, just do it. And then pass in the stuff you want to store like name, age, and bo. And finally you do a self dot thing equals thing for each of the things. Things. I really don't know why Python does this, I'll be completely honest. Now let's make programmer 2. When we create him, we want to pass in the three things in order. So, Alfred, age 37, dang, he's really young for an intern, and Musty. Okay, what is programmer 2's name? Well, programmer 2.name. What is his age? Programmer 2.age. Let's say we want to fire him. Programmer 2.layoff. Now, people say inheritance is really important, but I don't really think so because nepotism and whatnot. Let's say you're making a bunch of different types of cars. All of them have the attributes of make, model, year, and methods of honk, brake, and open trunk. But some might have special methods like crab walk or brick up when it snows or, you know, turn off heated seating because you didn't pay it's a subscription. Well, you can make a new class for each of them or you can just make a base class and all the others can inherit from them. The child inherits everything from the parent and can add more stuff on top of it if they want to. Now, all of these are important, but there are some stuff you literally cannot do. And that's where libraries <laughs> come in. You type import and then library name. For example, you can generate a random number, make an application, draw stuff, graph stuff, make a website, make a game, make an AI, or most importantly, pie jokes. Ah! <laughs>